everybody. Welcome to The Studying Brew, episode 972 on this beautiful Monday evening. Mm-hmm. It is Monday. It is Monday. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what day it is. You ever had one of those weekends and you don't even know what day it is, or a week where you don't even know what day it is anymore? You're just like, oh. I just feel like I just gone all the time, just working all the time, just doing something all the time. That's why I have planners. It just, it just like crazy. Um, yeah, it's just bananas. Like it's been bananas, guys. Uh, we missed uh, the studying brew on Thursday, and but who is this guy that's telling us the days of the week and he can't remember what's going on? My name is Andy. I am the guy that is having a hard time with calendars. But you're not here for me and my hard time with calendars. You're here for Brandy. She's got her Series 6, 63, 26, 65, and her Series 7, which makes her more than qualified to teach you all the things you need to know. So that way you too can get a pass notice. And we just talking about pass notices. Uh, like I was saying, we missed out on the studying brew on Thursday. Thank you all for being here tonight on the Monday. We are going to do Kona catchphrase keywords. We're going to be talking about keywords, keywords, keywords. Guys, that is the one variable that doesn't change from any exam that you do, whether it's a plumbing exam, whether it's a securities exam, whether it's a tattoo exam, it doesn't matter. And if you guys were to like, why is she, why do you say two tattoo exam? Facts. We had a student who literally passed their tattoo health exams mm-hmm. uh, after being uh, securities licensed with us. Uh, that was their side project. And they were like, I don't know if I could pass. Lo- Wait, I studied with with Kona. Applied all that. Bam. Passed them. It is a process. Yes. It is a way of learning how to master exams. It is a way of learning how to master multiple choice exams. It will help you out and pass your exams. Um, real quick, we missed out on Thursday because our son was playing football. We had a Thursday night football situation. I just want to say we are, we were in victory formation, 53 to zero. Uh, his team is four and oh for the season, 170 points scored on other opponents, zero, uh, points scored on them. So he's having one heck of a good season so far. Um, and then to, on, if anybody's keeping track of our family, I want to know Saturday, our daughter came 12th in her cross country meet out of 60 girls finished first in her school, uh, top 20 finisher. So she got a medal in her very first cross country meet. So that was awesome. And then she turns around tonight and then plays flag football inside linebacker. And she had a couple pressures, had a couple sacks, got involved in a few things and they won 27 to zero on one game and then 25 to zero on another, they do double headers. So we are, they're just, they're just kicking butt. We're just going, going with it guys. So thank you all for uh, allowing us to have that time off and working on not only getting you licensed, but also being able to go and be there for the kids and whatnot. And I know a lot of you and bringing it back to you and your studying guys, a lot of you are working on these licenses. So that way you can have freedom to go be with your kids and do stuff like that and enjoy life, right? you might be up against it. Maybe you're going for a career change. Maybe you need this because you're finally eligible in your firm to move on up. And then that allows you to have freedom and all it's standing in your way is these licenses. Guys, focus. What can be more important than your studying? It baffles my mind because there's always so many people that tell me that go, Hey, I'm not getting my study in. I'm not being able to do this. I'm not, I'm not finding the time. You know, the pressure is on and all this stuff. Guys, the pressure and timing doesn't fall in line ever. Never. Never. Nothing ever lines up. No. And if you were an adult for a while, you know this to be true. Mm. Nothing is really ever in line. We think it is. We do our best to make it in line. We do our best to prepare. We do our best to have. But you know what? Our best intentions are just not just the way it goes. Sometimes it's just the way it's dealt. That's just the way we're given. That's just the blessings that were, were dealt at the time, whether you see them as blessings or not. I refuse to call them challenges or negative things in my life. I consider them to be blessings. Andy, are you bananas? No, I'm not. I'm not bananas. I don't think I'm bananas. No, you're not. Um, but I can say this. Every time I felt like everything was against me, every single time I ever felt like the world was falling apart around me, Every time I felt like things were in closing in on me to that point, you guys feel that pressure in your chest, right? You feel like you can't breathe. Every time I've ever looked back, I go, you know what, man, 
some real opportunities happened out of that. Sure. Some real things happened out of that. It really pushed me to do this or pushed me to do that or pushed me in a better direction. It didn't feel good at the time. I didn't like it. It was much unlike my daughter loves running for three miles. It felt like I was running for three miles and I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of running. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like one of those things where you feel like you're constantly can't catch up. And some of y'all might feel that right now. You got to get your head back in it. You got to get the positive back in it. You got to look at this as a, of a way that you're being sharpened. You're, you asked, you asked for this opportunity. You asked for things to be different. You asked for a situation that put you in a better space. And then you backed away from it because it was hard. You backed away from it. You pushed away from it. You didn't want to do it. You felt challenged by it. You suddenly found time that there's not time and you can't find the time. All these excuses. And, you, and you're just like, why can't I? It's because you don't want to. It really is. I don't want and I know that some of you might be pushing back and they'd be like, oh, no, 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 I really want to. But that's just that, that you're not really looking at your time and your priorities. You're really not looking at it the way that you should and you need to. You can do this. You really can do this. I'm telling you, you can do this. If you looked at, at the in my Instagram and you look at all the people who passed, they're really no different than you. They're really no different than you. And a lot of people, and a lot of times they look at all these people and they're passing and we talk about it and you see Brandy working these quizzes like tonight, you're going to see her looking for those keywords and bringing it back tonight to tonight. You're going to be like, well, I can't see those keywords as easily as Brandy. I can't, I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't look guys. Brandy was not always Brandy that you see today. She was as just as lost as you. She was just as fumbling all over this, the LEM or whatever book and just as much as you, just as lost as you were, just as confused as you were, just as frustrated as you were. Just as. Mm -hmm. What you need to hear is it's only temporary. If you stay with it and you get consistent with it and you actually work hard at it, you will get great at it. You will get great at it. But like I tell my kids all the time, if you miss practices, if you don't put in that work, if you're not doing the stuff, you can't expect to win on that given day. You can't expect to see a pass notice if you're skipping out on the practices, if you're skipping out on the extra drills, if you're skipping out on learning the keywords, if you're skipping out on all the little extras, the little nuances, the intangibles that we talk about in our members area and all the stuff that we do, you can't expect to get that pass notice on that day. You can't. It's just not going to happen. There is that Hail Mary that does once in a while hits the end zone and it's like, how did they throw 98 yards and hit that? That doesn't happen every time. That doesn't happen. That's why they call it a Hail Mary. That's like just saying, oh, please, God, I hope it lands in my guy's hand and I hope we win. I pray that we win, right? I pray that I pass this exam. I did nothing to prepare myself. I didn't stay consistent and I hope I win. Guys, it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. But we'd like you to get a little bit closer. And if you're kind of working on that free situation, you're not with us and you're working on that free that you get, with your firm and much like I say with like the free and your firm is much like exercise equipment and a YouTube video when it comes to working out at home. Uh, eventually you'll start hanging the clothes on top of your, your, uh, you know, treadmill treadmill mm -hmm. starts looking like a, a, a place to hang laundry and less like a workout station. It's harder. It's more difficult. And then the explanations you get are not the ones that you need. If you feel like you're flailing around and you don't feel like you got any direction, join us. We make it so that way you guys can understand it. Mm -hmm. We do live sessions. We do a academy. We do live exam masteries. If you really want to be down, if you really want to know it, 
six days out of the week you have Kona and went some way or another that you can be involved in getting to be on something where you can get extra help, where you can get help, where you can reach out to us and ask us questions, where you can have that extra understanding. And if that's not enough, we have a whole Kona community. We have the discords. We have the study guides available, SIE 6 and 63 available. We got the 21 day plans. We got 30 day plans. We got 60 day plans. We got everything for the SIE 6, 63, 26, 65. And we even help out with the series seven. Mm-hmm. All you got to do is scan the QR code, hit the links, 951-290-3077. We don't do weekend cram sessions. So if you're asking about that, we don't do it. I We don't do content dumps. I don't believe you can get a degree in over a weekend, and I don't believe you can get everything you need to know to pass these exams in two days uh, and fully understand it. That's crazy. That's just bananas. That's just saying, hey, give me $100, and I'll, I'll read a book to you. There's no teaching, really. I'm just reading to you. So I don't believe in that. We don't do that. So if you were wondering that, we don't do that. Uh, I want you to get the most out of it. I want you to learn the stuff. I want you to learn a way on how to pass multiple exams because all of you have to pass multiple exams. It's not just one. It's multiple. So join us up. Join with us. Join join up with us. Scan the QR code. Hit the links. Become a Kona member. We got the Telegram. We got the Instagram. Check it all out. Tomorrow, we have a full schedule. We got the SIE Academy meeting up for their third week of content. Tomorrow, I believe, what are you going over? Package securities. All right. So even if you're studying on the 21 day, or maybe you're thinking about not showing, you know, you haven't been shown up or you haven't signed up yet. It doesn't matter how you guys learn these topics. You can, that could be your day one, really, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. That could be your day one. Some people go, well, I want to start on day one. Okay, well, today's day one, start. I mean, it doesn't really matter in which way you learn this. If Kaplan can, so can we. Kaplan literally has it in 12 units. They took four areas, made it into 12 units, and it is a margarita of stuff. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter which you learn. Uh, you can just put it any which way. Uh, series six, uh, right after that, we're doing a live session. I know that Brandy said we're going over annuities tomorrow. So that is a hot topic for series six. That'll be fun. And then we have small group tutoring for the SIE, the 666 uh, six and 63. Make sure that you are already been registered. And if you are registered, make sure that uh, you reach out if you're not going to make it. So that way Brandy can uh, plan accordingly. And also people can be into those sessions if they are not already registered and they ask me. All right. We have the 930 a.m. start time. And then we're wrapping it around 12 p.m. Pacific. Make sure to check those local times and listings for all sessions. The email is already in your email box. So check it out. Look and see uh, what time that all is. And new access codes for Academy tomorrow. All right. So let's go. Let's do it. All right. It's Kona Catchphrase Monday. We're going to put some questions up on the screen. I'm going to read them. You're going to simply just interact and you're going to put what are the key words. If you're brand new, you haven't studied, you don't know what the heck is what, what's what, that's cool because most of the stuff we're looking for are observational that has nothing to do with securities at all. Most of the stuff is not even have to do with securities at all. Well, isn't this a securities learning person? Yeah. Yeah. The first thing we're going to teach you is you don't always have to answer these questions with securities knowledge. No. So most of the time you guys miss easy points without even knowing it because you're too wrapped up in looking for the securities. Sometimes you guys get so caught up in it that you don't even see the keywords that you're missing that it could have just got you the easy answer. Yep. So to don't overthink it, don't look beyond it, just look at what it's saying to you, look at the vibes, look at the the different, um, you know, make the observations, the opposites, the sames, all that stuff. And if you don't know what you're talking about, we're going to have a Kona workshop coming up soon. And then you can get on that and check out all the different lingo. Plus we teach that uh, for free, but uh, all members get to learn that every week. So in those exam masteries, all right, let's play it. You guys answer in the, in the chat or take, take score on your own, on your piece of paper as you watch us on the replay. All right, ready? Yeah. All right. D foreign bills, C American depository receipts. B euro dollars. A banks bankers acceptance is bankers acceptances. I don't mm-hmm. know why I can't say that. Uh Sally says dollars and bills. Dollars and bills, y'all. And receipts. <laughs> yeah. Receipts. Mm-hmm. Um I mean, I obviously can see that B and D are, you know, European, right? Both Europe are foreign, I guess, right? Not necessarily European, but foreign. Yeah, we'll just go with that. Euro, Euro dollars are deep. Yeah. Deep cuts. You know what I know? What? 
It's not a U.S. song. It. It is a U.S. song. It's it's a it's um. But it, it has to be with foreign, right? Okay, so what it is a foreign country issues bonds in U.S. dollars. It's weird. Anyways, I know. As all I right, said, still it's foreign. Deep, it's deep cuts. But what you said, don't look too deep. Yeah, yeah. You don't need. You, so that's too deep. Even, that's guys, too deep. You guys don't that's even need deep. that. You don't even need that. So when I said it's foreign, then that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was just thinking if there were 65 people watching this, they'd be like, uh. you know, even if it is, don't think too deep. Yeah, no, we're not. We're answering these with absolutely no context. So if you were going to say actually, Andy, then you should stop thinking. Correct. Don't finish the sentence. Was that me? Yeah, it was you. I'm sorry. Teaching people bad habits. <laughs> all right. Did we get all the keywords? Pretty much. All right, let's go. Money market instruments guaranteed by a bank that are used to provide capital for international trade are called. Oh, man, nope. Brandy. Nope. Yes. Bank. Okay. Bankers. And go with? Bankers. Bank and bankers. That's why we said don't think too deep. And if you're going to go, Andy, actually. <laughs> see, that's where you would have got it wrong. See, I keep told your you. actuallys in your pocket. I told you all that I'm a I'm a overthinker. Keep that actually in your pocket. See, Brandy's an overthinker. Yeah. Andy, not so much. It's not actually. When they said think less, I said say less. <laughs> you said <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> Done. Salary or bonuses are earned income. Interest and dividends are investment income. See, salary or bonus bonuses are portfolio income. Interest and dividends are investment income. Stop. C made me laugh already. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Salary or bonuses are portfolio income. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, B. Salary, bonuses, interest, and dividends are all portfolio income. Huh. A. Salary, bonuses, interest, and dividends are all investment income. Hmm. And then that last one, salary or bonuses are earned income. Okay. Interests and dividends are investment income. That makes sense. So what answer is it? D, if you're asking me if it's true. I mean, okay. So the other three are really bad. Right. So let's go with what he just said. He goes, if the question says true, then that's the answer. Well, I mean, if you have three that were kind of laughable, Right. Right. And if you guys don't look, I did zero thinking on that. Salary and bonuses are earned income. Can we all agree on that? That's what we get in our paychecks from home, from wherever we work. And then interest and dividends. We know that has to do with investments, right? I don't know what part. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I know that is to be true. I, I mean, why are we? Why do we have this question? Aren't we learning about investments? And to be honest, A and B, I wasn't totally like. I'm just like, huh. That's weird. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Which of the following regarding income is true? And we did it. The there you go. See? Easy layup, not really thinking about securities whatsoever. Nope. If you guys don't read answers first, you are missing out because that was a w one that you would totally lose track of if you were doing it the opposite. You would have taken forever. You would have taken forever. Mm -hmm. D, short-term maturity. C, a fixed interest rate. B, secondary market trading. A, backing by the bank's good faith and credit. Wow. Hmm. What is anybody saying about that? That's all like fancy words. I helped up with the last one. You guys can do this one. Yeah, it's all fancy wording, but let's take it down to like, let's just take it down to what it is. Right? I guess they're going to wait for me. No, they're answering. Short, less than a year. I mean. Money market. I don't know. Could be. But there you go. Straight. Okay, so like I like when I when I don't see anything that like just popping, I like to look at words that make it different than the other answer choices. Right. Secondary market trading. Like so there, secondary market trading, fixed interest rates, right? Short term maturity, backing by the banks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Those are all words that you can probably guess will have a connection to the question. 
it's what would tip the que- the answer to the right answer. Tip the question to the right answer. Right. A bank issues and guarantees certificates of deposit, and those that are negotiable are considered money market instruments. What makes a CD negotiable? A negotiable. No, you guys are missing the question. Nope, you guys missed out. What's in the question? Well, there you go, Sally, right there. Boom. Negotiable. So then what's the answer? What makes it? What's negotiable in, outside of securities? Not fixed. Okay. I mean, oh, Tim put it in there. I can negotiate a trade, Eric said. Duh. Duh. If you guys don't know that, then you haven't been to the swap meet, I guess. Right? Or eBay. Or eBay. If you're trading somebody, I mean, y'all, come on. Some of you are old enough that were in the 1900s, just like I was, and you traded baseball cards. Did you ever take a bad trade on those? Come on. When you trade, you negotiated, right? I'll give you two of these rookie cards for that one player, right? Or I'll give this player, and I got you got two rookie cards I need. We negotiated. We traded, right? <laughs> it's connected. Pogs. I will. No. 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 Same thing. But yes. I say no only for other reasons. No. Okay. Different generation. Yeah. All right. We did baseball cards. I did. I don't know what I And if you traded marbles, you're a whole other generation earlier (laughs) than me. That's a way earlier generation than I. Uh, Regulatory development RD requirement. Uh, requirement to hold yearly meetings of all office personnel. Uh, B, yearly sales development SD requirement. Uh, A, continuing education CE requirement. I probably called people out on their age when I said marbles. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just did that last week. <laughs> I remember doing that. We'll talk about it after the brew. I want to know how many people traded marbles. Ooh, ooh, okay. So C, so, okay, okay. I don't know why, but A and D do, do sound similar. I think yearly. Eric, I what were you saying? I said, I think Eric traded marbles only because he didn't do baseball cards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think on this one, I think we should just look at the question. Yeah, let's do it. To keep up with recent developments in the industry regarding regulatory changes and other requirements imposed by the Financial Industries Regulatory Authority, or FINRA, as well as needs identified by the broker-dealer firm, registered persons must fulfill the firm's... Um, close. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's a hint there. That- Is it the yearly sales? No. No. So we're down to three. Requirement to hold yearly meetings of all office personnel. Hmm. Do you think that's it? No. Regulatory development RD requirement. Well, somebody put in the in the somebody in the chat put regulatory changes. So you would think that that would go to D. But there's something very, very important in the question right after the parentheses that would tip you to know that it's not specifically D. Right after the parentheses, as well as identified by the broker dealer firm. That's huge. That's huge. Because if you guys were going by just regulatory, regulatory, you probably would pick A, I mean D. And we know that that's not really what that's called. It's called the regulatory element, but either way. So that's not that because we have the as well as. How about we're just going to continue? If it makes sense, if you think about it, you're continuing your education on changes. I didn't even see that. Thank you, Ty. He said to keep up with. Yeah, that's continuing. how I thought. That's how I thought it. I didn't even notice. To keep up with, to continue, you're continuing it. It's done. Oh, yeah. It's fire. E words. 
inspired. Keywords. Ooh. Ty doesn't always show up, but when Ty shows up, <laughs> gets a keyword. That's right. D, characteristics of neither equity nor debt securities. C, only the characteristics matching those of equity securities. B, characteristics of both equity and debt securities. A, only the characteristics matching those of debt securities. You know how we feel about onlys. What do we say about onlys? Usually not true. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, B has an and, so we're including the two, and then the other one is a nor. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Now, con content. So it either is a yes or it is a not. Right. Now, content would be the only thing I would tell you here is that unless the set options, why the heck are we? Isn't this a securities exam? Right. So unless it says options, I think the answer is B. Right. Right. And And you guys have said that in the chat, right? So real quick. Preferred shares have. We already said, B. unless it's options, it's going to be B. Yeah. See how easy that was? Easy. If you know the tricks like the onlys, that left you with a 50% chance on B or D. And then the and. The and or the nor. Those right. are the guys. I can't stress this to you enough. More people have failed these exams because they don't look at those key words those are so important to catch the and and the nor catch them and then write it on your scrap paper that b is inclusive d is a no right get out of here, get out of here. Well, however you want to phrase it you're writing it it's your hieroglyphic cliffics you're the only one who needs to know understand it so however you associate that make sure to note it and that way if they question is way more complicated than that you're clear on where you're going exactly because the question may not have been that simple right remember we don't master q banks we master keywords we master techniques right I feel like yeah last question stagnation stagflation deflation inflation uh, C, I associate with Tom Brady. Just deflate the football, man. Deflate. Yeah, deflate gate. Going down. Deflate gate. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, However you associate. Up inflate balloons. Yep, up. Inflate balloons. Uh, Stagnation and stagflation. And I always think of puddles they're not going anywhere right they're stagnant stagnant, stagnant yeah. water going nowhere some people want to go why what's the difference between inflation and na nation brandy well stagflation what the heck word is that sounds like a weird up what? but same like what is that but i know stagnant is puddles so that's like would be equal right right deflation's going down inflation's going up Okay, so this is what I would do. Even though you said it's just weird, mm -hmm. I just associate it will be weird. Like it's the same, but there's some part or element that's going up or down or something. Like there's two parts to it that doesn't make sense. Like it works against each other out loud and you don't understand what that means. How is it going still and then up or whatever? That's true because stagnant means it's not moving, but deflation, inflation inflation is moving um so same but different you're not gonna make me say that i don't believe in same but different it's like you don't believe in precedent uh occasionally our economy experience is an unusual combination of rising prices and high in employment economists have given the unusual pairing what name i think i already talked about it already right What is it? Stagflation. But what is it? It's uh weird. Not, not, not gonna say it. 
you know, same but different. It is a, I guess it would be a same but different situation. Nah, I don't know if it is. But do you see how weird that is? Even like they said, unusual combination. It's just a weird combination. When I teach it, I say, I tell people to look out for the twist where it's like, it'll say, um, it'll say. Can we teach a little content right now? I can. Why would rising prices and high unemployment be weird? Because if you, if you're, if you're unemployed, that means you're typically on a budget, which means you're typically looking for either the less expensive items, you're not out buying luxury items, you're definitely not spending something that you don't need, you know, like the, the wants are still out there, you're only buying what you need. And so prices go up when people buy things, right? The more you buy, the the higher the price goes. So how are people, how are, is prices rising when people have no money? It seems the opposite of what the people can afford. It's exactly, it's, it's just a weird thing. Now they tried to, to pin that during the pandemic. They said, well, we're in stagflation. No, man. The fact was, is that people weren't working quote unquote, but you were getting money from the government. Right. So, you know, you're getting those stimulus checks. So that wasn't a typical stagflation situation. Right. And then the numbers didn't did not support unemployment. No. People were still working somehow. They were still employed. They just weren't working. Right. See how weird that is? So it was a different time that weird. has not been. Some would say mapped. someone would say what? That has not happened ever. What, what do they the call that, Randy? Of our country. What is it called, Randy? unprecedented it hasn't happened no unprecedented she won't say the word oh my gosh because we heard that word every hour on the hour she won't say unprecedented the president there you go so a little bit of content on there but guys see it's sometimes it's a vibe sometimes it's just feeling out what the words are sometimes you just look at all those answers and it all makes no sense to you but if you take it down word by word by keyword and kind of just make little notes like we did on the answers it becomes clear what you can eliminate. Then the next thing you know, you got 50-50 shot. The next thing you know, you're just looking at the fact that one says and, one says nor. Okay, that's where we're at. You take the confusion right out. You disassemble that answer and question like you're a Jason Bourne uh, getting a gun pointed right at you, right? And just, just all the parts are all over the ground all, all of a sudden. That's what you got to do. You guys got to disarm these questions. They are not, do not make them scary. Don't give them any more power than they need to. They're not that they're not that bad. They're just words. Take them down to the key words that they are. Don't think too hard. Don't think too deep on it and get those answers right. Yeah. All right. We're going to have member sessions tomorrow. We're going to be back for test taking techniques Tuesday, tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. But all I know is you got to stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your friend's face. That's all I know. Keep the positive mental attitude. PMA, everybody have a great night. Thank you guys so much for being on. We super appreciate you guys a lot of questions you can look beyond the content just see the non-securities vocabulary words make the match let's go practice that in your quizzes we'll see you tomorrow